you are now an elected MEP. You announced your candidacy in boxer shorts on TV with two ties on it, it says here. Yeah. And, you, and I got elected. And you got elected. <laughs> and it, it, you, one of the reasons you wanted to stand was, it was because you no longer wanted to see the same nerds in power in Brussels. That's now, true. Not only in Brazil, but in Cyprus and, as well. In Cyprus as well. Okay, the whole political class yes. full of nerds. Now, I guess one of the difficult things I'm just wondering will be, are you going to become a nerd over the next five years? How are you going to stop yourself becoming a nerd? <laughs> Do you see what I mean? I mean, Because a lot of that stuff, a lot of the stuff that happens in the European Parliament is really, really nerdy. You have to go into all these details about... You know, I don't think you, you need to be a nerd to do all this stuff. You can't... Be a politician and be alive to be full of excitement and do stuff with I'm looking forward. Passion. I'm look, <laughs> Hopefully I'm looking the forward. other nerds don't rub off rub of their nerdiness on me. <laughs> right. This is what I'm saying. Because if you're in there and there is a committee meeting on agriculture and you're talking about three cows in that quota and four cows in you know. But I find that interesting. I find generally the meaning of my life is to learn. I'm going to survive for the next seven days on this side of the island with only a knife. And my friend Olya will do the same on the other side of the island. And now our goal is to see who can survive better. Boys or definitely girls. And to experience and understand the world how it is and to be useful. So I, I will find already I found this journey very interesting. I don't know anything about politics and now I started learning. I'm in the house of politics now. So And and also right, and you said in fact you never voted before you stood, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And uh, it's crazy, it's crazy. It's crazy. You're on a crazy journey, and uh, well, it's going to be great to see how you find what your impressions are. I mean, you've already met some politicians here in the European Parliament. Yeah, I'm having meetings every day with a lot of MPs, a lot of people, of their team, a lot of the staff people uh, started understanding. But maybe we can kind of take a, a moment because people will be a bit shocked about this. Uh, I want to explain how this happened in Cyprus. Please do. So I was the most voted person in my country, Cyprus. I was the first with 71,000 uh, votes, and the second person was uh, with 56,000. And we have six MEPs, and the order were, got lower and lower votes. So um, I think uh, a miracle happened with me getting elected, but I will try to explain this miracle. Um, first of all, I think uh, social media it was a par big part because I was an independent in Cyprus. All the party was parties were putting six individuals in their ballot, and I was alone, independent, and I was competing not with one person in, in a party, but with six people in the party. And I got more votes than the whole parties in Cyprus. So uh, let's try to explain this, how this is possible. A fucking stupid 24-year-old to be the most voted person in the whole country. There is a couple of reasons as I look back. First, uh, I think uh, the world of politics uh, looked a bit more promising, a bit more interesting, uh, because, uh, 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 okay, people in Cyprus especially were tired of the same politicians, the same lies, the same promises pre-elections and never delivering. So state of politics in Cyprus was not very good. So they wanted also to slap the system yeah. through me. Anti-establishment. Anti-establishment vote. Let's say half of my votes were anti-establishment okay. votes. This is what the polls were showing. Okay. But other 50% of the votes showed that uh, they believed in me, that I, I can do... Uh, I can have a difference uh, and represent my country well. So I, because I'm a young uh, YouTuber, I'm a very successful, let's say, businessman, and I had some cool successes in the past. I was in the Navy SEAL part of the army. I was a very famous YouTuber around the globe in English language. So these uh, people saw like a successful 24-year-old, they said, Oh, let's give it a shot. Uh, let's give him the try. Something different. He's not a politician. He had to me and another thing was admitting, guys, I don't know anything about politics. 
but I didn't know anything about business. I didn't know anything about the army, but I was very successful at it, and it would be a nice journey. So I was honest, and I brought some more aliveness into politics. <laughs> I was going with T-shirts, not uh, costumes and all this stuff, ties. And another thing, I think that's the biggest thing, and I left it for the last, social media. Social media uh, allowed me to use uh, war drones uh, in my war with the other politicians, and the other uh, politicians were having uh, swords to fight with. So, uh, uneven battle. Uneven battle, my friend, yes. I think that's, uh, that's uh, fair to say, because I was, let's say, I was a regular politician go to a place to, uh, to have to talk with a hundred people to say their message. Okay, I was going to a place to talk with a hundred people, but I had a leverage, uh, leverage to get more from one thing that I was doing than any other person right, was right, doing. Right. So I was live streaming yeah. my way into it. Yeah. So another twenty thousand people were watching me live stream. Yeah. I was cutting short yeah. form content, and hundreds of thousands of people were watching me. Mm -hmm. So I was doing one thing, but I was having two plus two in my campaign was 10. And two plus two in other mm -hmm. people's campaign were eight. Mm -hmm. So with understanding the social media, I think that's how it happened. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was important to explain you guys what happened because I know this is crazy, but I tried to give you an explanation. But I mean, you could be the start of a phenomenon because you're not alone, in fact. There is the, have you come across the Spanish party led by this guy, Alvise Perez. Have you come across I heard him? about him, yeah, also, yeah. Also an influencer. But a political influencer. Ah, right, right. So okay. not like out of the blue, just no, a kid no, with no, no experience but in But using social media. Correct. And successfully, his little party has got three MEPs. What I'm wondering is, are you and people like him, are you the start of a phenomenon? In five years, are we going to see 10, 20, 30, 40 kind of... Is it going to be essential to be an influencer in order to become a politician? I'm not sure if it will be essential, but uh, let's talk more about philosophically about this uh, candidacy and this phenomenon. You know, I think I saw a glimpse of a more cool democracy, actually, from independent people to the people and not through parties through the TV, through the people. I saw people, in the, the people that voted for me and all this stuff, or people that didn't vote, they interacted with me constantly, with messages, with the comments, they were making videos. So that, I felt more direct democracy. Mm. And I think that's more alive. That's more uh, what we're moving towards the future. And I think more independent people, because it's crazy that just a kid 24 years old mm. surpassed all the parties, mm. uh, all the candidates of the whole party, Parties of the biggest yeah, party, left yeah, and yeah, right, yeah, yeah. in the whole country. So that shows that maybe uh, we're moving to more like independent democracy with social media, right. with people. You so something get different. around the parties, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Do fuck it the yourself. parties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that no, not always the parties are, are bad, but in most situations, the parties are just fighting for their own benefits and not for the benefits no, of the I, whole I see people. That. I and see that. kind of democracy by default is just people fighting between each other. And it's like the two parties just fighting between each other. And I see they're dividing the people in a way that that's their purpose, to win votes and divide the people. And you can also, you can ask your followers um, who are your electors, you can ask them what to do, right? And you can ask them yes. for their opinion. Which, which I did. Like, I will give you an example that was an amazing. So. I was offered by a party to go with them. This was the Green Party? Yes, that was the Green Party in Cyprus. And I put a poll in my TikTok account. Yeah. And I was like, ladies and gentlemen, what do you want me to do? You want me to go independent? You want me to go right. with the Green yeah, Party? Yeah. And now, until now, like 15,000 people voted and 70% yeah. said no. Yeah. So I, the, I told no, them I will no. do whatever you want, and yeah. they didn't want me to go with the party. I didn't win, yeah. so it's like. It's Are you going to carry on doing that? Because there could be a big, big vote in the European Parliament. You're going to be asked to vote, for example, on the future of the next European Commission president. Currently, currently Ursula von der Leyen. There might be somebody else. It might be her again, and they're going to ask you in the European Parliament to say, "Do you want her or not?" Are you going to ask your followers which way to vote? I'm thinking to do some stuff. I need to see, first of all, if I'm allowed to first. Ah. So I will see what's the rules and the regulations. But I think that's interesting yeah. to bring. And 
you know, uh, one of the things that I think uh, Europe failed as a whole, not only Cyprus, uh, is to educate the people what is Europe, how it works, and all this stuff. Nobody, the fuck in the countries of Europe, I'm sorry that I curse, I apologize. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, nobody knows about uh, what, how Europe works. What is, okay, there is uh, the European Parliament, how it works, right, how they yeah. vote, how the decisions, yeah. who is the... Uh, uh, the leader of the whole Europe right. is the four, apparently. So, so it's like not a lot of people know about. It. I think that's a big failure on the European side. Right. So, my goal with this candidacy as well, because I have the expertise, is to kind of inform not only Cyprus people, which I started informing and letting them know what is going on and everything, yeah. and making videos, yeah. but the whole Europe. I started making some English vlogs of my day, how it works, and right. I think I will take the whole world on the journey with me to understand how the Euro... What and I think like. that will be one of my contributions in the European Okay, that, so that sounds cool. Now, you've obviously, as you just explained, bypassed the parties. Will you be able to do the same here in the European Parliament? Because as you probably know already, in the Parliament, there are parties, there are also these groups. Yeah. Now, if you're in a group, you get advantages, like you can, you know spend money on assistance and you get more speaking time, this kind of thing, or you could stay independent. Have you made that decision yet? I'm thinking uh, that's a big decision because in, in country Cyprus, you can go as an independent and it's not, there is not a lot of disadvantages. But here in Brussels, uh, I think it works a bit differently. Uh, if you are just one voice out of the 750, and especially the... Uh, the people that they are non-aligned, uh, the independent the people, they are have them as the crazy ones kind of, and they mm. put them on the side, and they don't give them too much like uh, attention, and right. you are not allowed to go and vote and, uh, and change stuff in committees and all this mm. stuff. So I'm I'm understanding the data, and I have some option. I have three options basically ah. to go to renew. Right. Green Party right. or non-aligned. So right. I'm exploring these three options. Okay, Renew, that's kind of centerish, I guess. Green, well, green, of course, is green, but it also here in Brussels, it's considered to be a bit more left-wing than right-wing. Is that fair? I think that's fair Does that to describe say. you? Are you a bit uh, more left-wing? Nah, nothing describes me, but I will be forced to join if I want to uh, do right. some so stuff. Right, so you have to make a to decision. Chain. Yeah. Right. So, so you're not talking to the right-wing parties then? What? You're not talking to the other groups? No, this is the t two groups I'm talking okay. with. Okay, now that's, that's okay, now obviously... So I want to describe, like, I, I find myself, like, uh, maybe, uh, maybe we put ourselves in a box. Okay, right, extreme right, center, left. So, and it's like, um, maybe why, why we're forced to do this? Maybe uh, there is a different way. Maybe, uh, but I understand anyway. No, I know, but maybe you could <laughs> stay non aligned as well. Uh? It can be done. It can be, in fact, there are lots in this parliament. There are like 80 or something like yes, that. Yes, but let's say probably 40 of them will go to be, join some parties, and then another 40 for probably 40, 50 will stay non aligned. Right. I'll see, we'll see. Okay, now. This is going to be great to follow your journey because, I mean, uh, is it fair to say that a lot of what you've done until now has been fun? Three, two, one, go! I will let him go first, and I'm going to pass you. Oh, whoa, whoa! You see, there is hills here that we can fall. We need to be extremely careful. That's, you've had a good time. Right? That's the, uh, you know, when you kind of think about life, I think... Uh, one of the most important things to optimize for in your life is fun. And I'm not joking here. I think it's a very serious pursuit to pursue fun. Because when you are having fun, you are learning more. Psychologists say you are more excited. You have better relationships with the people. You, and we have only one life. So uh, when you choose the paths that are fun, uh, I kind of I have like an instinct. Okay. What I will do now, maybe because I, had, I was in this dilemma uh, six months ago, I'm making like, let's say millions on YouTube, should I just quit all this money and like this th job that I love to pursue politics? And I was like, what is more fun? And 
pursuing politics was, was more fun for me. So mm-hmm. I take decisions based on this instinct, having fun. Well, I'm going to be interested to see how much fun you have in the European Parliament. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seems yeah. an impossible task. <laughs> 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 because, I mean, sense of humour and the European Parliament, I'm not sure so how... So serious. Uh, I don't know, but, but for example, though, for example, I mean... Never you, say never, we can uh, shake uh, them, we yeah, can make you, them fun. You, well, you're talking about your homeland, for example, and the divisions of your homeland. I mean, that's not funny, is it? Can you make that I'm fun? not saying that it's funny, I'm not saying that it's... Uh, but let's, why not, when we discuss this very serious topic uh, uh, about Cyprus that, uh, for example, my uncle was lost in the war of 1974. So I have a personal, it's not fun, but like if you take things too seriously, you are going to die. So let's discuss it and maybe have some fun along the way. I'm not saying that all the things, some things are not fun, but even serious things and can be fun. A lot of times when I'm sad, I find it fun because I'm experiencing all the emotions. So, like when you were going without food for <laughs> yes, thirty days. For now so I'm 137 pounds. See my body before. This is my body now. But about this challenge that I did, a lot of difficult things in my life. I found when I do the very extreme challenges, let's say not eating food for 30 days, only water. I kind of find and meet myself on a deeper level. Yeah. So like Socrates said, uh, the beginning of wisdom is to know thyself. So I think I meet myself on a more core level when I am in my most extreme and difficult times. I understand who I am. I want to move on to politics, though. For example, <laughs> I assume here let's we are. Politics. Yeah, yeah, let's talk politics. <laughs> because, I mean, all right, on cyber, is it true? And this is just according to the research that, that's been done on you. Is it true that you're in favor of a by zone or by communal solution to Cyprus? Do you have a, a preference to how things should be sorted out? No, I don't have a preference. It's not true, but uh, I am open to solve. You know, in Cyprus we have, okay, there is two ways of solving the problem. Are you in favor of this or in this? So I'm, I'm not sure if that's the right way to solve. Maybe there is a part uh, three plan or let's see, uh, data are changing okay. all the time. So maybe let's think about uh, some other things. But uh, to be honest, I'm not that knowledgeable on how to solve. Uh, the politicians in my country, in, in, uh, they're trying to solve this for 50 years. It's been 50 years that the problem uh, is. So I'm not sure if I, I will be the one to come up with in the next two, three years with the exact way how we're, uh, we're going to solve the problem. Open-minded on that one. Open-minded and be um, open to some new solutions. And what about migration? Because I know that's a big issue in Cyprus. Yes. Right? Do you have that's, an opinion on that one? Yes, I, had an op- I have an opinion that I think is more fair because I think we are having uh, kind of a bigger problem uh, than uh, the countries in the rest of the countries in Europe because of our geographic location. Right. So we receive a lot more uh, people uh, there. So I think it's fair to say for people to be distributed evenly in all the European countries and not for some countries to have more because they are just like... I think it kind of became a problem. People, okay, so this people is in Cyprus are not happy with how many people we receive. So the idea is reduce the burden on Cyprus. And, and distribute and it to okay, all the Which is more or less what the European yes. Commission wants to do. Wants right? to so do. You're, so you're we're just trying... Let's do it. Let's be quicker because... European decisions that are happening now and after is it becomes it's, years. It's Europe slow. is very slow. It's very slow. So, okay, and uh, you mentioned the green groups. You're in talks with them. Is that because you're an ecologist or? Well, uh, because they are kind of open-minded and they are allow you uh, to vote whatever you want, and there is no, it's more free to be with them. But also, I, I believe, like, um, uh, I follow Elon Musk's uh, advice on this. Like, we have one planet, uh, let's not play Russian roulette with it, like with six bullets, and let's see if we can destroy it or not. Even if there is 1% chance of us harming the whole planet, we only have one planet. So let's be careful. So I agree with the whole theme of uh, helping the environment, but 
maybe with all, not all of the methods. Let's close everything. Let's not have cars. Yeah, right, Let's right, like, maybe yeah. it will be and it will take some time to right. have sustainable okay. energy and all this stuff. So uh, I, I want to know your first impressions. I mean, you've been in the European Parliament. You've come to the Brussels Signal Studio from the European Parliament. But how many times have you actually visited so far? Um, I'm here from started this week uh, to uh, the job. They uh, gave you an office. No, they they will give me an office when the old MEPs are, will leave. Uh, so in 15, 20 days. Right. Uh, but I'm from. But I have some friends from Cyprus that are already MEPs, and they gave me an office. Ah, uh, them. Okay. So I am there from the morning right. until 10 a.m. in the morning, until 10 a.m. in the night, and just having meetings. I'm asking questions. I need to understand because to develop a plan and to understand what is going on. You need to understand the whole data, right. how a system works, right. what it, it is, and slowly, slowly you can develop a plan and right. be effective. Right, and uh, that means you'll be getting assistance or something like that. Yeah, you, it's, it's you work with your sister at the moment. How, is she on the YouTube side? Yes, think? but you are not allowed to work with the members of your family. But I, because hopefully, thank God, we have some money from the YouTube. I will employ her uh, on my. Uh, uh, my, myself, yes, and she will come uh, as well. And yeah, now I'm in the look for to understand because you know it's e easy to hire editors, let's say, for my team of YouTube, but because I know how a video can go viral and what you need to edit, but now it's positions that I don't have a lot of experience, so I need to learn it myself, I need to understand so I can hire and guide some people. Uh, so but it's almost impossible task because uh, I need to hire people. That I, so it's, it's, it's difficult. I, I have a lot of work, a lot of work. And then if do. you join committees, you're going to have to go in and sign to get the money. I mean, you're going to be, and you won't. Yeah, you have to sign. <laughs> I, mean, I sign, I started signing already. Started signing already. It's <laughs> kind of a joke, guys. It's like <laughs> everyone is running to sign to get the 350 euro of the day. And That's it's it. Like, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> maybe that system needs changing because some of them they go in and they sign and then they leave. Uh, you know that. They uh, leave. Yeah, yeah. Or they just go nine a.m., nine p.m. in the night just to sign. Uh, but it's not a problem. You know, I'm not a big supporter of just okay. You need to go. It's like the work. You need to judge people based on the outcome of their work. Okay. If you want to work three hours a week, okay. And if your team is doing the rest. Okay. Feel free okay. to do it. Like, okay. let's just uh, be a good business. Because I'm a businessman, I judge things by the outcome, not by, okay, I came to work today, or I was two hours, or I was 12 okay. hours. So, okay. um, I don't know. And then, right, obviously, you're a businessman, and you've been doing very well on YouTube. It says here you've been earning more than a million a year. Is that true? Um, not a million a year, okay. but a bit less than that. A bit but less yeah. than that, and, but they're not paid as well here in the European Yes, I apartment. got a big uh, pay cut. Big pay cut. <laughs> are you going to be able to carry on doing both? Do you yes, uh, so apparently you are allowed to do both, which Second is very job. exciting. Yeah. So uh, uh, I want to do politician as a full-time. Um, MEP as a full time, and I want to uh, continue doing uh, YouTube part time. And one of the stuff that I want to be doing is kind of explain to the whole world how the parliament right. works. Yeah. So I think it goes together. Also, it gives me leverage for yeah. better alliances. And right. To um, anyway, it's, I think it's, it works hand in hand. And so, it, as part of this plan. You've been looking at videos about how the parliament works and how the commission works. Apparently, there is not a lot. Like, it's like this is like, and people don't find it cool as well. So, because there is some videos about explain, but they have very low views. So this seems like a topic that is not well uh, communicated. Is not that much of an interest. Or is boring. Or is or is or they make it boring. Okay, so you can make a boring subject interesting. Yes. This is your speciality. And that's the cool thing when you're a YouTuber. You can be in a corner for 24 hours and make it interesting. Mm -hmm. But it's the way that you approach the topic. Okay, now that, that, that's going to be... Get ready, people. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're, a, you're a man of challenges, aren't you? I mean, if you set yourself some challenges, we were having a talk in the newsroom here, and we said, what, can we set you some challenges? I mean, you like hugs. I know that you famously yes. got a hug out of Elon Musk, didn't you? I mean, you could try making some political enemies hug or something in the Europe. Huh. I'm wondering if you set yourself any challenges like that. Well, I want for the beginning to 
kind of take it a bit more seriously for uh, them to not take me that I'm like uh, a, a prankster. Uh, I want to, and then after I get to know people and all this stuff, maybe I will feel more free to do some more fun stuff. But I think the first impression plays a role to people. And I'm, now people are excited about me in the parliament. Uh, this everyone kind of heard about the crazy youtuber that got won the elections right. in cyprus so i want to use this as leverage to have good collaborations good communication i don't want people to take me uh as a you're getting state. serious already yeah but in, the first in a fun way baby <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll look forward to seeing that now what do you think to the leadership we have today in Brussels. I mean, you, might, you know who they are already. The, we have Ursula von der Leyen, head of the European Commission, Charles Michel, for example, at the Council, Metzol at the European Parliament. What is you, before you came here, what was your impression of these people? Um, to be honest, I, I didn't see anything about them. I Had just, you heard of them? I heard of them, yes, huh? I know <laughs> them. But I was not very familiar with them from before. But uh, I saw some videos and it was, they are talking a bit boring. Uh, they they are just uh, regular politicians that they not uh, they don't. So I think they I think their communication style can be improved. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I need to see. Uh, and now we are need to vote about who will lead uh, the European Parliament mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. European Commission. So we'll but I mean, because I mean, one of the dangers, I guess, of being a free thinker and an ex-prankster, let's call it, ex no longer, now you're a serious <laughs> man. But what, what, one of the dangers, you have, you're free at the moment to do what you want. But if you say something wrong, and this is maybe why some of these leaders sound very boring and very dull, because they're thinking very carefully about every word they use, because you put your foot in the wrong place once, yeah? You can be on the receiving end of a lot of hate. You've been on the receiving end of a lot of love, right? Lots of people like you. But if you say something, yeah, casually, even, even without thinking about, let's think, Israel, for example, or about the Ukraine war, which I'm going to ask you about in a moment, or, or anything like that, about the Green Deal and farmers, if you, you will say something, you'll have to say something because you'll be voting, right? You'll have to justify your vote. And suddenly, you're no longer this kind of fun guy who does videos. Then you suddenly become a very serious pol a politician. Some people will support you, but some people will not like you. Understand this? Your life is going to change dramatically in that sense as well, right? You're prepared for this? Uh, yes, but I'm, I'm, I think you kind of direct kind of a question about, uh, in a way, of what I think about this communication style and like uh, being afraid for every word to be wrong and to polarize people. Well, I think that's a true uh, problem. And uh, but you know, we have two two alternatives to talk more passionately and maybe make one mistake here and there more freely and to have an audience that hear our stuff because you know it's kind of a problem i think to be the president of the european parliament and to upload a video and to get 10 views you understand this right <laughs> it's a big problem nobody the fuck hears what you're saying so we, we are running into two lines Nobody hears what I'm saying. I'm saying con politically correctly, and I have an audience that understands, and they. Okay. They, so I think that's kind of a trade that sometimes you need to jump. One yeah, the, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to connect with the people as well, <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. I see. I see your point. Okay. What's your position on the Ukraine war? What is my position on the Ukraine war? Ah. Okay. So in my candidacy. I didn't want to say a lot of stuff about positions because I understood that uh, it's polarizing people more. So I was I was just against the system and I avoided to say position. I was saying positions that I knew about the school system that sucks and uh, all this stuff, uh, but which I'm very passionate about. As a young person, I think the school system in most countries in Europe, they are killing creativity, not encouraging creativity. And I was talking more about this thing that I understand and know. Uh, I don't understand a lot of things, but to me as an outsider, it seems like a war between evil and the greater evil. 
So it's not good or bad. So, and to this... Uh, did you just, just to understand, did you just say between two evils? One, two evils. One lesser, one greater? Yes. Okay, go on. So, uh, uh, because I think this is not a war between Ukraine and Russia, it's between the United States and Russia. Uh, so, and like millions of people are dying. And, and like it, the Ukraine became like the playing field that, uh, USA is doing is uh, the war, so I don't know. I think that needs. To, I think great evil is United States and evil is Russia. Okay. So I think this needs to be solved in one What's way. What's the solution? Or, or, or the other? Um, here, the, here in Brussels, right? There are essentially two positions. The vast majority of politicians, your colleagues, yeah, the vast majority of pro-Ukraine and uh, collecting a lot of money and a lot of music, uh, munitions, to, <laughs> munitions to send to Ukraine. Yeah? And then there's a minority which would call themselves pro-peace, which would, who, who would say, uh, you know, we want the war to stop and the best way to stop a war is to find a diplomatic solution. But the first group would, would say, no, we have to defeat Putin, otherwise who knows what he'll do next, okay? Yeah. So, I mean, are you going to choose one camp or are you going to try and stay in the middle? Uh, if I need to vote, probably I am going to maybe vote from the people that uh, go for peace, but it depends on every scenario and how the war... If, if it's after five years, things might change. If it's now, I think my decision will be different. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Well, thanks for the honest answer. Anyway, I appreciate that. Well, and, and what about Gaza? Have you looked at the Gaza conflict? Well, that's a more complicated co topic. That's a very complicated topic, and I'm sure I'm not the one to solve it. <laughs> well, lots of but, people have tried and failed. <laughs> yeah, it's true. But, I mean, do you uh, have uh, any position on what, you, the, what uh, Europe no. should do, if anything? No, I don't have. No, no position. But if I... Uh, you know, for example, if we need to vote on some stuff, I have time to understand. I have, I will have the right team, to, and we're going to have a philosophical discussion. What, how we think the data uh, are presented, and what we can vote, and what is the dilemma here? And I will uh, mm -hmm. vote. Okay, okay, uh, that's great, wonderful. I'm just looking at my notes here because I've, uh, I don't want to miss anything out. There's, a, there's, um, in Greece. I don't know if you know this person. There's some kind of cattle raiser or butcher who's been elected if you followed her it's a woman right do you know do you know it's her? an interesting yeah. uh, situation i di i don't know her uh, but i saw some videos uh, of her she seems like a regular person that was uh, just randomly the people yeah. decided to elect right. her which is uh, fun i like yeah. these types yeah. of things in politics yeah, maybe. and wha who says that a politician with 20 years of career in politics can do a better job with another butcher so it's like Maybe the person, because a lot of the times the people in politics, they are in their own bubble and they forgot about the actual people. So maybe if you are one of the people, maybe we're going to judge you by, by your uh, term. So I think let's give them a chance. These new and depend different people. Yeah, so let's, right. Let's Absolutely. give them a chance. I just, because I'm one of them. You are one <laughs> of them, right. Right, well, yeah, this is this is your big chance. The, the other thing I have here is you're, a, you're a, a big believer in cryptocurrency, true? I am not a big, big believer in cryptocurrency, but yeah, I support Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin uh, is going to do Good, going to do good for the world if it's uh, more used by water use and by governments and all this stuff. And I think countries should encourage it and not ban it. So okay, right? Okay, um, okay, okay. And um, artificial intelligence. I am. Um, ah. Um. I think that's the challenge, and I think that's one of the biggest reasons that I wanted to get involved with politics because I will understand artificial intelligence. I can help uh, with the. Uh, because I think that's a, one of the most important topic now in the world. Right. I think bigger than any war. Uh, because uh, I see some um, uh, potential threats, some potential benefits, where I think we're changing, uh, the world is changing, and maybe in 10 years with the rapid growth, uh, maybe we're going to have a different world. Maybe, uh, for example, I'm a YouTuber. Now there is some stuff on OpenAI that will, you can say, have a video of Fidias in space and saying this thing with wearing a t-shirt of the European Parliament. And they can do that. So maybe they will take my job. 
uh, that uh, those programs as a YouTuber and as an influencer. So this is uh, things that we need to think about. This is things that we need to understand. And I'm not sure if the people, the old nerds uh, in the parliament understand about these topics and they feel them, the rapid technological e evolution. So I think uh, that was one of my responsibilities to go here and understand and try to right. cover the artificial The interface between uh, artificial intelligence and politics, that kind yes. of thing. Yes, yes, yes. You, I mean, I know that Elon this. Musk is very worried, in fact, about AI. Very you know? worried? Uh, it, he is very worried, but now he's one of the... Uh -huh. He have Western. companies, uh, he developed companies about AI. Also, Tesla is an AI company. Also, a X is an AI company. So yeah, uh, as much as a critic he is, he's now in the game. Yeah. So he's saying, okay, let's not give them the the way to choose our future. Maybe it's better for me that I'm a good guy to choose the future, which is an interesting thought. But maybe, like everyone, maybe we can. That is a danger always. Maybe pave the road to hell with good intentions. So this is what we because this can happen either way in politicians as well. Like maybe you you kind of limit the AI potential and you pay a uh, word to hell because, or maybe you unfold the AI right, potential yeah, and yeah. you pay uh, word uh, the word uh, to with to hell with good intentions. So that's uh, always a danger. And uh, I'm just going to ask one more thing. Um, right, here in the European Parliament, they're, they're struggling with that question. To what extent do we regulate, stop it? And to what extent do we just kind of like keep an eye on it? But there's another one, in fact. But we, fuck Europe. They are, uh, <laughs> you can say that <laughs> they, here. They yeah, are, no uh, we're stopping uh, the, you know, why always the innovation is in the United States or in China? Okay. Why they are always, the because we're doing something wrong with the uh, regulation, we're not attracting the right companies and all this stuff. We need to yeah. be more encouraged of this stuff because that's the most important race, yeah. I think, in human history. Yeah. Uh, and if we stay behind, maybe we completely stay behind and... Forever. Uh, right. Forever. Yeah. So it's like a game that we okay. need Get to be careful. It. Yeah. So... The last. I love you, Europe. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what you just said. Anyway, you the parts of it. Let's say. Listen, there's there's one more subject I wanted to talk about with you, and that is free speech. Something that we go on and on about here. Now, um, are you aware of what's going on? Because there's legislation going through. They're talking about it at the moment, which means that in theory, all your messages could be examined by some kind of algorithm they claim is to cut down on child porn on the, but on the other hand we know this is the start of something that could be very bad i mean is this an, is free are you a free speech supporter uh, maybe i can say i'm a free speech supporter maybe i like what elon musk is saying free speech absolutist kind of let the people talk uh, and okay there, there is some um, di di bad things about letting um, the killers have say whatever they want on social media and all this stuff uh, you understand what i'm saying yeah. right so but uh, i think uh, by and large if we have uh, the other opinions and have uh, free speech, for example, I think banning Trump, it's not that I support Trump, but banning Trump from Twitter, I think that's causing more problems than solving problems because he will find different voices, polarizing people. So maybe some kind of free speech, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's important. Ah, but, but you said, though, just now that you were a, maybe a free speech absolutist. That means everybody gets to talk, right? Yes. Okay, so that includes, because for example, here in the European Union, they've banned the Russian TV channel. Which, uh, th that's I think a problem, because when you ban uh, an opinion, maybe you, you understand, it's not that I agree with the Russian propaganda that they're trying to pass, but if we don't hear, it's like we're only hearing one yeah. side of the coin. Yeah. So I think, uh, give us the data, don't ban, or, or give us both of the sides and let us decide what we're going to do and not just give us one sided of the opinion and this is what we and this i think one of the biggest problem in the war of ukraine because for the last i don't know three years that the war is going uh, we're just hearing uh the ukraine side everything uh, in the west uh, everything in the russian side is banned so yeah 
it's, a, it's interesting. I'm happy now. I'm not saying that I support Putin. I am just saying that it's, I'm happy that, for example, Tiger Carlson interviewed Putin and they put it on X. I think having the opinions there is important for democracy. For a healthy democratic system. We're going to leave it there. I just have one. It's not really a question. It's a plea. Maybe after, after how long? I don't know. After six months, will you come back and give us your first impressions? I mean, to see if your first impressions coincide with what you've learned six months uh, later. I Is think that... we'll be into maybe not six months. Uh, give me more time to learn. Maybe a year. Okay. Uh, maybe a year yeah. we can do it you again. You can come and in say what you've learned yeah, in a in year. No, that would yeah. be wonderful. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thanks that's, for coming. Okay. That's a promise. Thank you. I love you guys. Thank you for listening. I love to you us. too. Huh? I love you too. <laughs> <laughs>